A few years ago, I reviewed a side-scrolling sports game called Golf Club Wasteland, which is now known as Golf Club Nostalgia after a recent name change. It was a fun and unique title about an astronaut returning to a post-apocalyptic Earth to play one last round of golf. I loved the concept, the atmosphere, and the amazing world building so much that I came away a little bit disappointed that the experience was little more than a golf game. Now, much to my surprise and joy, developer Demagogue Studio has created a bigger and more ambitious spin-off called The Cub that completely ditches the golfing in favor of a Jungle Book-inspired story set during the Armageddon. It's an action platformer starring a feral child that finally gives you a chance to explore the long-abandoned planet and uncover its many secrets. Is this the post-apocalyptic game that I wanted all along? Or was I better off just golfing? That's what we're about to find out when I review The Cub. The Cub is the kind of game that wears its inspiration on its sleeve. Before you even play the game, you're being told that it's the Jungle Book meets the Armageddon, and that it's a side-scrolling action game that takes its cues from those classic Virgin Interactive games like Aladdin, The Lion King, and obviously The Jungle Book. And while all of that is certainly accurate, and maybe even a great way to get people interested in your post-apocalyptic game, can't help but feel that they're selling the cub a little bit short. You play a young, feral boy who has seemingly adapted to Earth's presumably toxic air. We don't know much about his past, but given how much this game references the Jungle Book, we're led to believe that he was raised among the wolves and relearned English from listening to the radio broadcast from Mars. That is, after all, where all the Earthlings escaped to when the bombs started dropping. Now, those same humans are funding expeditions back to their former home to conduct research and maybe bring back samples. Now, things get a bit sticky for our hero when the newest group of Martians realize that there's a feral child on Earth and they need to catch him. Not only would they get a big promotion if they brought a kid back to Mars, but it might actually help in researching why some people can breathe on Earth and others can't. No matter if it's for science or selfish motives, this trio of astronauts is on a mission to capture the kid, and you're gonna spend most of this game making sure that that doesn't happen. Like I said at the top, this is a side-scrolling platformer that is inspired by 16-bit adaptations of those popular Disney movies like Aladdin and The Jungle Book. The gameplay is surprisingly simple, since our hero really doesn't have anything in the way of attacks. He'll run, he'll slide, he'll swing, he'll climb, he'll push things around, and he'll double jump. And that's pretty much it. Later in the game, you'll need to dash through doors and windows. And there's a move that's introduced midway through where you'll glide down to safety. There's really no hacking or slashing or fighting back, which separates this from a lot of the action games that inspired it. Of course, the real star here isn't the gameplay or even the story, but rather it's the amazing world the developers have constructed. This was, after all, the best part of the original, too. From the locations I remember from the first game to the new wide-open landscapes full of wildlife, this is a version of Earth that you won't soon forget. There's a real attention to detail in every location, from the bodies strewn about to the way everything was just left before the bombs fell. The whole thing is both eerie and kind of beautiful. What I love the most about this post-apocalyptic world is how varied it is. This is not one of those games that hits you over the head with the same type of location over and over and over again. Even though the game is only a few hours long, you'll feel like you went on a real journey. Parts of this world are funny, parts are scary, and there are even parts that are breathtaking. And it all works because our hero is constantly on the move. The golf game merely hinted at a long abandoned world, while this spin-off goes out of its way to flesh things out in a big way. This is a masterclass in world building and almost all of it is conveyed through nothing more than small details and the lovely visuals. 
Now another thing that the original golf game did so well was the soundtrack, which comes in the form of a radio station that's being broadcast from Mars. The Cub handles the music in the exact same way. This is an interesting mix of catchy tunes and information about life on the new planet. From time to time, you'll hear interviews with the people who escaped Earth, waxing nostalgic about all the things they miss and longing for the people that they'll never see again. This is all handled extremely well, often to the point of actually making me feel a little bit nostalgic about a planet that I'm currently living on. I love how the little details help to make this post-apocalyptic world feel more real and lived in. And let me tell you, the music is incredible. It's perfectly timed to hit you right when you least expect it. And some of the choices they make will leave a real impact on you. Now, one thing that I had forgotten about golf club nostalgia was how melancholy the experience was. After getting over the high of golfing on an abandoned planet, you were forced to come to grips with the astronaut's loneliness and why he traveled back in the first place. It had a surprisingly emotional back half, and the same is true with the cop. After a playful start, you'll begin to get invested in this feral kid and his day-to-day -day struggles. The game is real good about slowing things down to show you the emotional toll that all this is having. I actually really like that the story isn't afraid to go in a dark direction. As a game, I prefer this one over the original golf game. It expands on the world in important ways and does an excellent job of fleshing out the story and characters. That said, I do wish that there was a little bit more to the gameplay and puzzles. Most of the game is so straightforward that you won't really have to think much when traversing the levels. The puzzle stuff is mostly tied to just finding the various collectible items, all of which is completely optional. We're often in such a hurry to get from one location to the next that we rarely have time to slow down and solve real brain teasers. That's something this game is sorely missing, especially in light of not having any real combat. I'm also not sure that this story will hit as hard if you haven't played Golf Club Nostalgia. Some of the game's most emotional bits are all tied to things that happened in the first game, and new players may be confused why everybody spends so much time talking about golf. For me, learning that this was a direct continuation of that other game came as a complete surprise. And you should have seen my delighted face as I stumbled my way into locations that I remember from the first outing. Discovering this set up a series of expectations that you might not have if you're coming to this game new to the series. I definitely recommend playing the Cub, but you may want to check out the golf game first. Look, no matter if you're a fan of the Jungle Book, those classic Genesis games, or even Golf Club Nostalgia, you owe it to yourself to experience the Cub. as a fun and very playable side-scrolling platformer with a lot of personality and a surprising amount of emotion. This is yet another great game from Demagogue Studio, who apparently has already announced a third part of the series called High Water. If it's anywhere as good as the first two titles, then we're in for a real treat. One of this year's very first games is also one of its most surprising. An action game spin-off of a post-apocalyptic golf game, the Cub wraps an emotional story around fun platforming sections and fast-paced chases that'll have you on the edge of your seat. Taking inspiration from old Genesis games like Aladdin and The Jungle Book, this is a great throwback game that is overflowing with personality. Best of all, this game is a masterclass in world building. The abandoned planet is fun to explore and full of surprises. The gameplay may be a bit on the basic side, and it repeats a few of the beats a few too many times, but that's not going to keep you from enjoying this fun and satisfying adventure. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite video game spinoff? I'm not talking about a sequel or a prequel or anything like that, but rather a full-on spinoff. Preferably, it's going to be one that's just totally different from the original. Let me see your picks in the comments below. 
In other news, we'll be back later this week with a new EGM Ranks episode looking at Time Crisis, as well as a brand new Nintendo Switch Online Review Crew episode. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 